Morning, folks. I'm here with Mike Breeding. Your business is Grateful Guides. Correct. He guides here on the uh, the Susquehanna River, and uh, I got a couple. I actually found a little little critter in the shallows that uh, I've been doing a little bit of tackle crafting, and we're going to show this little guy next to. And he's not. I don't know whether he's dead or whether he's just so cold that he isn't hardly moving at all but this is a little jig that I'm gonna start with I made that with the do it mold think that'll work Mike absolutely I can't wait to try it yeah so that's eighth and I got 16th and it's it's their it's basically their their weedless Ned head you know rig so and I just yeah I just I tied it or I actually modified the do it mold so that I have the uh, something to tie on there and I'm gonna dress it with this stuff that uh, the Z-Man bat wings so the Elaztec kicks up and is buoyant. I separated those and uh, let's see I will I'm gonna go like that just gather a little bit of plastic bring that down and that's just barely gonna tuck in there and I don't know how weedless it really makes it but Man, is that, is that not a good match? It's a little bit bigger. Wow. But what do you think? We're in the same, uh, same bright profile. This was green pumpkin with a little bit of blue flake. It's got a little bit of blue on them, although there's nothing glittery flaky about a crustacean. <laughs> but the green is right. Let's give it a go, That's man. It's absolutely perfect, Jeff. Cool. Let's try it. Well, Jeff's throwing his crawfish imitation out. I'm going to give him a little bit different offering. I'm going to go with the minnow. I'm going to go with a rusty craw from Rapala XR78 X Wrap. Probably my go to bait on this river when it comes to stick baits. I probably caught more fish on this stick bait than any other stick bait combined. So I'm going to give her a little whirl here. What I like to do is I like to position myself with my spot lock. And when it's just cold, it's a pretty much a dead stick affair. I'll take this thing and I'll throw it back as far as I can get it. I'll even let some more line out. I wanted to get it away from this boat and it's really clear water. I'm going to wind it down two or three times. I'm going to twitch it and I'm going to leave it sit there. Now the bass in the area, they already see it. Trolling motor's doing all the work. This thing's just sitting there waving in the wind, saying, come look at me. And they do. They come and they stare. They sniff. They swipe at it and swat at it. And after a minute or two, they might decide to come take it. Very well-defined thump. So this is why you use the smaller profile in winter because it's just it's just barely inside of his mouth and uh, you know that it makes a difference that's cool first first fish I've caught on that that little Ned Rig finesse jig with the modified do it mold I'm happy
Say uncle. <laughs> so you got the Lucky Craft. Got a 70, 78 yeah, Ghost Mill. 78 Ghost. Beautiful. Sometimes that's the ticket in this crystal clear water. Yeah. profile because I feel like they they whack it you know there there is no they're much much less of a hey the fish was just there when it looks like a crayfish you know why did they fascinate spinnerbait when it's chatterbait they grab spinnerbait they grab. I don't know I don't know what the difference is but I know that the, the craw is an easier, it's just an easier bite to feel because I feel like they got to knock the, uh, they feel like they got to knock the pictures off. I think they're trying to disable it before they eat it. Whereas the minnow profile, they can just take it. Sometimes with like a large mouth with a, with a minnow, he wants to just suck it in. Yep. There was a bunch of them over there. But again, it was another solid, you know, obvious, well defined. He didn't try to attack this thing. He was just sniffing. Yeah, yours was just just there. I think I got an active active possum right there. Keep eating. Get back on him as quick as you can. Put some mojo out. Well. We were just talking about that, how you, you release fish into groups of fish and that one fish goes back and looks freaked out and the other one stops eating. <laughs> so you're switching you switched over to that teaser tube tube and do you think that's a crayfish profile or a baitfish profile crayfish profile okay and there are times you think where they they prefer one over the other. What do you think the difference is between you know days where they want it, want the craw over the minnow or the minnow over the craw? Water temperature is a lot to, has a lot to do with that, Jeff. But I think more often than not, sometimes we like to think that it's water temperature, and we like to think that we're matching the hatch. But sometimes the fish doesn't want to look up. So if you had a minnow profile such as a swim bait on the bottom jigging it you might find the same result 
because the bait is on the bottom and the fish wants to eat off of the bottom. He doesn't want to raise his head up a foot. Right. So sometimes that, that is the key. So Not, bottom oriented as opposed to the middle of the water column. Correct. The water column is more important sometimes than the actual pro profile of the bait itself. Gotcha. Because you can do the same thing if you were to take off your profile of the crawfish imitation that you just made up and put a swim bait on. Right. You might find out that they might want the swim bait even more than that. Okay. And it could be color. Right. Well, I'm going to stick with what's working, but we may play around with, with some bottom-bouncing uh, bait fish profiles a little bit later. Whatever the reason is today, I think you got a winner. Yeah. So it's always fun to experiment. Middle of the water column, bottom of the water column, minnow profile, crayfish profile. Well, the crayfish profile is getting eaten, so we're going to experiment. I gave him the black one. I'm using the green, and it's working. Show the black one. Black one out there now, buddy. All right. Black and blue. That didn't take long. Absolutely beautiful. Blackie again. This one feels a little bit heavier. Guys, this is Roger. This is one of my partners here, Roger Willingham. Tell me about your boat. River Raptor 1966 XR. 250 horsepower road tax on it. Uh, I think it's the best built boat out there. If you know about machinery and you know machining and welding, and that's, that's a big reason I'm glad I got it. Uh, other than that, I, I, I'm one that runs it easy just like Mike does. We, we, we run about 35 miles an hour and don't push them. But if you're going to push them, you have to warm them up the temperature. And I see a lot of people not doing that. And I think that's where most of the problems are coming from. So <laughs> I'm no expert on it, but that's what I've learned at this from, this from having an inboard like this. It's right. really different than an outboard. It's a beautiful boat. Kind of dirty right now, but I've been guiding and haven't had time to clean it. Right. We're launching it in mud sites and all that. Using it. it. I'm really loving it. I wish you had, you wish you could see the trailer. Yeah. You just got the trailer. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Nice. He's back here, ways. Is he a good fish? Feels like he's got some weight on him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, man. Good one? Yeah. Yeah. I missed him. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. Oh, look at that. Came out. Hit yeah, I net. barely had him. I barely had so him. So you switched from the switch to the jerk bait from the craw to the jerk bait and pick that guy up well i seen it started getting a little overcast and i have a lot more luck with jerk baits when it's a little bit overcast so i figured i'd give it a switch and just see beautiful fish it's a nice fish there you go buddy all right 
we're making a run. We're actually putting it on the trailer and uh, going to a different spot. So Mike, we had Roger talk to us about his boat. Why don't you tell us about yours? Uh, this is a Luma Rider built in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania by uh, Riders Welding. Brad Ryder is the actual owner, Brad and his dad Marlon. Uh, they've been building boats for, I guess, a little over 20 years. They started in Alaska and ended up coming back here when the jet boat, in, when the inboard jet boat craze came about a few years back and started building uh, boats specifically for this river. And this is their very first inboard boat that they built with the 250 Rotax, uh, Rotax in it. Uh, I love the boat a lot. It's uh, 20 foot, 72 inches wide. You can land a helicopter back here. Uh, the reason for the Rotax is so uh, there's no dog back, dog box on the back, like with the old uh, sport jet. Um, it allows you to go a lot shallower than I did with my outboard. It allows me to uh, have a lot more room for my clients and comfort uh, with this boat particularly because of how wide it is. Uh, also, it's a quarter inch aluminum and it has uh, UVHMW fastened to the bottom of it, which uh, makes it pretty near bulletproof or rock proof, so, so to speak. Uh, you can still get yourself in a little bit of trouble, but it'll slide instead of bite. Uh, aluminum, when it hits a rock, it'll bite and stop you. With this UVHMW, it allows you to slide so you don't get stuck on a rock or on a ledge. And it's also a lot safer that way. I love the boat. It, uh, it's, it's really, really economical on gas. I burn probably less gas in this boat than I did with my 9065 jet. This is a four stroke. Uh, it's a much more efficient on fuel. And uh, I just can't say enough good things about the boat itself. I love it. It's changed the way I've got it. It really has. I can take an extra person now. I can take more equipment. I can run a lot further. Uh, all in all, it, it's, it's, this is the way to go. This is the state-of-the-art boat now for the Jet River, or for the Susquehanna River, as far as jet boating goes.
just switched from the craw to this bait fish profile, that scented jerk shad. And sometimes it's the preferred profile. It just, it took a long time to catch this little guy with it. And I just feel like the crustacean profile is is the better one today and it varies from day to day some days you know the, the bait fish profile is it but i worked a long time i, I was convinced i i gotta catch one on that and uh i actually broke one off that was my own fault but for how long i spent fishing that to how long i'm fishing the the two claws up profile i'm going back to it so mike talk to me about about what you're looking for when you read water to say yeah that's in 37 or it might even be colder here yeah you know, water temperature in the 30s what are you looking at on the surface that tells you yeah this is the place you need to stop and fish absolute key thing that i look for jeff is concentrations of foam like that right there when i see little bits of foam like this i know i'm getting warmer just try to drop the fish. <laughs> but when I see a big concentration of foam, near little concentrations of foam, I'm in. That's all I need to see. When I see that, I know that I have the depth and the water slowed up enough to hold fish near areas that are, have a lot more current than that. So that always designates where I am supposed to catch fish. If there's a bunch of foam, I know I'm in the bunk. If you see the eddy created by that ledge coming off the bank up there, that's the obstruction. You'll see the concentrated area of foam that I was telling everyone to look for. And that's really, really a good spot. But one thing that I also look for when I'm fishing a bank with a big eddy, I'll look for a back eddy. If I see a strong back eddy pulling up towards the front, I'll back off until I see where the back eddy stops and then the river starts to pull down. When the current starts pulling down and the bubbles start flowing down river, like that right there, that's where I'll start. And then I will work my way up. But that's what I, that, that area of bubbles there seems more productive than that major amount of foam there because of the back eddy up near that. There's so too much it's current. It's too turbulent up it's, there. Even though it's trapping a lot of foam, it's exactly, too turbulent. Exactly. But then and, this, this is just. And, it's, and not only is it turbulent, but that is much stiller. That up there is moving probably a mile and a half an hour north. So it's moving still. Right. The bait's gonna be moving one way or another. That, it gets, a t it gets a chance right there to be dead sticked. Okay. It's hard to dead stick in that. Let's go catch some ones off of that one. This grass bed here, Jeff, doesn't really show itself until around 4 or 7, which it was two days ago. So the other ones were out of the water and just didn't seem quite as productive as the one where the water was just rolling over the top. So we're going to see if they're still here today. It's dropped two inches in two days, and it's also dropped about three degrees in water time. one to the break right up here that one was hard to move i'm gonna loosen the drag on this one because i don't yeah i just it just felt like it has some weight i thought there were some bigger fish i didn't have any but it's still left but they were bigger than the hatch yeah but come, come around here this one is significant it's a good fish like Mike, down like Mike two. was like, yeah, let me take you to the big fish spot. You want me to back you down only like a tail? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to let him burn up his energy and decide to come to me. Well, we're in no hurry, Chuck. I know. Look at Don't him. Don't lose him. You see him, right? Oh, yeah. He's all the way back up into the eddy. Like I said, I don't know how many's left here, but we beat on them pretty good less than 48 hours ago. 
And that's another reason they'll go back there too, if they've been beetle on. They'll try to hang out in the back, the back section. Come on. That's a very good fish. She's not throwing you anywhere. She's just more than that. But it's hard to reach spots, though. I'm get you. She's under the boat? Mm -hmm. That's Singular solid thump. Are you worried about her getting into the motor? No, I'm just worried about that UBHMW you cutting your line off. Oh really? Because <laughs> it's all chewed up and stuff. <laughs> That's it. That fish is sustaining for some 36 degree water. Uh-huh. It's a big that's a great fish man. Yeah, keep going up, keep going up. No 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 I'm telling the fish go Go upstream more, because I want to bring him back. <laughs> yes! That's really good. Yeah, it is. That is an adult. That's a good one. Right in the roof of the mouth. I had him hooked good. This is a good rig. Right in the roof of the mouth. Good, solid, good, solid whack. And... I don't think she was going anywhere. She's, uh, hmm. I may need to put pliers on her. It's a really good hook. It's a good rig. I'm really thrilled to have, uh, you know, have the time with you, Mike, testing out these jigs for the first time and be on top of a bunch of good fish. Yeah, it's a great rig, but nothing beats having time out here with someone who's on the water all the time. And Mike, Every time I come up here, I, I tend to run into them, so it's, uh, I, get, I need pliers. All right, we'll let her get back in there. Thank you, Fishy. Are you hooked up at the back of the eddy? Yeah, way back. Way, way back. Should I get that net? Um, I might get that net. Like a salmon. Oh, that's a good fish. Get a little jerk. Oh, I got my line out there because I just stopped okay. reeling I around. I can work around it. Well, professional there. Okay. Yeah, I just your line out of there. totally stopped <laughs> reeling to grab oh, the okay. camera. I see what's going on. We got issues. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Got it. Nice, man. Beautiful fish. I got this fish all the way back at the end of that taper of that eddy. And uh, what's, I think what's happened is in the last two days, the river has felt two inches and dropped two degrees. So they went back where it was a little bit deeper, but yet slow enough to kill, still hold them. All right, so both of those fish, really nice fish. I'd say they're from the very end of the eddy. So sometimes if you break it into top, top of the eddy, right up close to the grass, middle, right next to us, and, and there's some great still water in there. But that's not where we got them. It's uh, all the way at the end there. Talk to me about your presentation with that that jerk bait at the tail end of the eddy. Same well, place I got my jig fish on. What I like to do in the ear, I can actually, I want to cast it back out anyway because I wasn't in the right spot plus I thought it might have a leaf on it. But anyway, what I like to do is I like to go to the opposite current seam, cast it out there as far as I can. All the way to the end of that tape, perfect cast. I wind it down two or three times and I'll give it one twitch and I'll let it sit there. If I have to, I'll catch the slack up and I caught it right there. And I'll let it sit. And if I have to, I'll give it a little teeny twist like that. And I'm done again. But have to. You don't want to. 
no, it's just, you just, you have to do something. But yes, this is dead sticking. How long did it sit still before that one grabbed hold of it in 36 degree water? Right around three minutes, which is an eternity. It's only been out there about 45 seconds now. And the last time, right around a minute, it felt like a leaf brushed it, but it wasn't, it was a fish and I thought it was. So the fish was coming near it and all it did was brush against the bait. We just love up on it. Yep, just give it a little bit of love. <laughs> and it feels just like a leaf touching your bait. I think we're gonna move, Jeff. Uh, seems like you get a couple and you gotta go. Uh, this clear water, when they see them flashing on your line and you're catching them, it seems like they put off some mojo and they uh, quit biting. So uh, we're running out at light. I think if we move to a couple more spots, we'll get two or three more fish and then move we, again. We got three out of here. Yep. One there, two at the end of it. Let's hit another spot and see if we get another two or three out of that one. Yeah, we got a little over an hour of fishing left, so uh, we'll try to hit two or three more spots and uh, try to manage our time as best we can. Cool. Let's do it. All right. Another ready, another fish. There's another one too, because I missed one. Yeah. You get them on the tube? On the tube. Nice. Thick little guy too. Yeah. Chunker. Beautiful fish. This one had broke off my claws twice. I don't know that it was this one both times, but <laughs> he's gonna he's getting the blame. He is. They want to they'll get him jumping. 36 degrees, you wanna jump. Can I have my appendages back please? I should probably be heading this fish. Yeah, I should definitely be noting this fish, but I'm not. Well, if you need it, don't fall in the water. No! <laughs> yes. oh, yeah, it is a good work for all those things. Or just, I mean, I, I don't know how many times it's happened today, but basically, the trailer comes back with just one. A second ago, the one I had on came back with none. He took both of the claws and left me with just a little nub. And honestly, that's years ago how I came up with the idea of the little tube is going smaller and smaller and smaller. Good fish. Oh. All right, good fish, not a good job on the net. <laughs> That's a good job he's in there, buddy. Yeah. That's a... That's an excellent fish. Nice chunk. Look at that. They're all good when it's 36 degrees out. <laughs> awesome. big head that's staying down isn't it yeah I think the line got a little compromised too and be easy on it he's not real big but I'll take him though Jeff I'll take him all day long open your mouth up 
Nothing it's a good fish. Nothing to sneeze at. No. Keep coming. Got some little black on him. Yeah. Black tip. Beautiful. Nice fish. All right, we've had a incredible day out here. Oh, I really appreciate great. you. It's been great. It's having me out, and um, we got a little bit of a run back to to the lodge. So yeah, we got a couple miles, so we better get on it right now and utilize what little bit of light we have left. But I've had a great time catching up with you, Jeff. It's been too long. Yep. But um, you know, it's it's interesting to get your your take on how the river's changed with the introduction of a new top end predator and how that changes how these fish winter. Um, yeah, you know, it took, it took me a little while to figure it out through trial and error, but all the fish aren't on the same page. There are fish that have learned to avoid trouble, and trouble is the big deep winter holes where the catfish can accumulate. Right. These holes are deep enough to hold bass, but not deep enough to hold a big population of catfish. Right. So therefore, I've learned that I can't go to my winter holes and make full days out of it like I used to and be productive, but I can run and gun when the river has enough water in it where I can run safely around and hit eight or 10 productive holes and get a few fish out of each one and then leave. It is what it is. Uh, one good thing is this year is a lot better than last year and last year was a lot better than a year before that. So the river is in good shape and it is definitely shaping up to be as good as it was in my opinion in 2014, 2015, 2016. Nice. Cool. How do people get in touch with you again? You can get in touch with me with my cell phone is the easiest because I'm always on the water. 443-614-9842 or go to gratefulguides.com and you can get in touch with me through Instagram or Facebook, just going through our webpage. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Let's Thank get you, on man. it. It's been a great day. All right.